Boom. What is up guys? Coach Chad here, co-owner of the Next Level Coaching Academy. I hope you guys are doing freaking awesome and crushing your week. So this is a new thing for me, huh? Going live. Nikki, what is up, Nikki? I'm gonna I'm gonna wave at you. So cool stuff for you guys over the next five days i'm going to be doing what's called a growth series kaylin what up kaylin she says what up what up so over the next five days i'm going to be doing a growth series christine damn i'm getting much more people on here than i thought which is getting me excited so now i can finally say it over the course of the next five days i'm going to be doing a growth series for you guys now this is the lead up to the next level coaching academy if you guys didn't already know we're launching on july 6 which also happens to be my birthday i'll be 25 super excited but i wanted to provide you with a ton of value leading up to the call thank you guys for popping on i definitely see you guys down there uh, and the first thing that i want to talk about with you guys is standing out in a crowded space so the online fitness co the online fitness coaching space is getting increasingly more crowded right and a lot of the objections that I hear from people, especially just starting out, is, Chad, how do I stand out? Is this something that I should even be doing? Is the, is the space way too crowded already? Here's what I'll say to you. Every single industry is crowded. Think of plumbers, right? Think of doctors. Think of dentists. Think of any industry and think about how many freaking people there are out there that are already in that industry. This industry is freaking just getting started. So you are in the right space. If you even have a thought about being an online fitness coach, you are in the right space. But there is strategic ways on how you can stand out. Nikki says big facts. Let's go, Nikki. I appreciate that. So there are strategic ways on how you can stand out in this crowded industry. And the easiest way to stand out is to identify an ideal client, to identify a specific type of person that you wanna help. To give you an example, now this is gonna be an extreme example, but I'm gonna use my fitness business as the example here. We only help real estate professionals and business owners get healthy and fit. Now think to yourself, what other fitness coaches only help real estate professionals and business owners get healthy and fit? Not many, right? So we become the immediate solution within that target demo. Right? If I do a good job at marketing, if I do a good job at grabbing attention, when a real estate professional and entrepreneur wants to get healthy and fit, we're gonna be top of mind because we are the people that help that specific demographic. So what I'm gonna do on this live is I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you guys through six different questions. These six different questions are gonna help you identify who is the type of person that you wanna help so you can market to that individual. When I say market, I mean make posts, make content to that individual to grab attention use that attention to then make a sale. So like I said, I'm gonna be asking you guys six questions that's gonna help prepare you for that. Damn, I'm getting freaking blown up with messages right now. But take a second, go, damn, this is Caitlin's tanning stuff. <laughs> I just looked at it and I was like, is that shit? <laughs> but no, it's Caitlin's tanning stuff. So take a minute, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and let's get after it, okay? So once again, what are we doing here? We're identifying your ideal client so that you can stand out in a crowded space. Question number one, do you want to help male or female? Why is this such an important question? This is an important question to get a handle on because marketing, speaking to a male is a lot different than speaking to a female, right? It requires different uh, wording. It requires a different tonality. Men like different things than females. We're actually hormonally designed differently, right? So we respond to things differently. So that's why it's so important to identify, hey, do I wanna speak primarily to men or do I wanna speak primarily to females? With that said though, a lot of people get tripped up here. They're like, hey, if I only choose to work with men, does that mean that I can't have a female client if they wanna come on board? No. It just means that when you're making content, you're going to make that content to just speak to the sex that you want to attract, right? And let's say you're trying to attract females, but a man comes into your space and you feel like you can help them and you want to help them, you're not gonna say no per se, but like I said, all the content that you make will be in verbiage that resonates more with females, all right? Number two, identify your ideal client's age range, right? What's the age range? Are you trying to work with people who are younger, right? 20 to 30, are you trying to help people who are a little bit older, 30 to 50? Are you trying to help seniors? 
I, I wouldn't recommend it, right? Because they're probably not on social media. I also wouldn't recommend going any younger than 20 because they're not finan they're probably not financially capable. I actually have one client who works with people between the ages of 15 and 20. He helps junior golfers, and his biggest or his biggest challenge in his business is getting the attention of his parents. So we had to create a ton of systems for him on how we can get the parents on the phone call and on the sales call, and he absolutely crushes it. He did 25k last month because of that. But what I'm saying is it's probably not advantageous to go younger than 20. So what is the age range of, of individual that you're trying to help? Same reason why you should identify if you want to help a male or a female is because when you get specific on the age range, you can speak in your marketing like that person, right? Help talking to a 20 to 25 year old is a lot different is a lot different than talking to a 25 to a 30 year old, right? Or it's a lot different than talking to somebody who's 30 to 50 and maybe has kids. So it's really, really important that you get super, super clear on the age range that you're trying to speak to. So once again, when you're creating content and when you're creating your Instagram and Facebook profile, you're gonna make it attractive to that age range. So now that we have identified your sex, right? The sex of individual that you want to speak to. Now that you've identified the age as well, now you can start to get a better understanding. Once again, how am I going to create content to a male that's 25 to 30 or a female that's anywhere from 30 to 40, right? These are, this is why I asked this questions. The reason I asked these questions is because it's going to help you with your marketing. All right. Number three, what is their occupation or hobby? So like I mentioned before, right, we help primarily real estate professionals and business owners, right? I chose to go the occupation route. Why? I resonate with it a lot, right? I resonate with business owners. I'm a business owner. I'm a business coach. I'm basically a businessman. <laughs> so I resonate with that and that's why I chose that for my fitness business. Now, Mary, what's up? How are we doing? Now, if you chose to go the hobby route, totally fine. I actually just had a conversation with one of my clients, Rachel, about this, right? We said, hey, let's go the hobby route. And she and she's now trying to speak to people who are super into makeup, right? They're super into beauty. They're super into fashion. Maybe it's not their occupation, but it's clear that it is at least their passion, right? So you have to choose. What is the occupation or the hobby, or it could be multiple occupations, multiple hobbies of the person that I'm trying to attract. Why is this one important? The reason this one is, is important is because when you're going to do lead gen, right? When you're going to add people on your Facebook, when you're looking for people to message and, and book for calls, you will be looking for occupations. To give you an example, on Facebook, since I am so specific with real estate professionals, I'm joining real estate professional groups sending friend requests to those individuals and then excuse me when they when they respond to those friend requests starting conversations that lead to phone calls another reason it's great that i chose real estate professionals is i can go to real estate events i can go to local real estate events i can create conversations i can ask them to add me on facebook i can dm outreach them the next day and i can book them for a call right so the reason you want to pick a specific occupation and hobby is because then you can know, then you know hey this is where i need to find that person right hey i want to help people who love dogs great join a ton of dog groups right when you join those dog groups boom now now you have all your ideal client in that group makes sense makes sense let me know if that makes sense okay so that's number three. Number four, it's a good idea to get a grasp on the income range of person that you're trying to help. Why? Once again, it's all about language, right? You speak to a male different than you speak to a female. You speak to somebody who's making 50K a year a lot differently than you speak to somebody who's making $500,000 a year, right? It's, it's two different, essentially personalities, if you will. So get really clear. How much money yearly does your client or does your potential client make? And this, once again, it's all about language. It's all about understanding your ideal client so you know where to find that individual and you know how to speak to that individual. It has nothing else to do with anything because you guys might be saying, well, well why do we need to know how much money they need to make? It's very, very important, right? Because once again, it will help you identify what type of person that person is, how do I need to speak to this person, and where do I find this person, right? Individuals that make a lot of money, you're probably gonna find them at networking events. 
Maybe you find them in, when you go to, uh, let's say a football game, right? Maybe you find them in the executive suites, right? And you know, hey, I need to be up there. I need to be in the executive suite, suites so I could be around my ideal client, right? Maybe they're not. Maybe there's somebody who, you know, <laughs> I don't know, maybe they can't even afford a ticket into the game and they're, and they're tailgating, right? Then you need to hang out there. Let me know if that makes sense, all right? So that's why it's very important for you to identify the income range of your ideal client, all right? Number five, are they single or are they married? Is your ideal client single or married? Same reason, married people, they just have different thought processes than single people. The single person cares more about looking good, right? They care about being ripped so that they can attract the opposite sex. The married person is more motivated about looking good maybe for their kids or their future kids or to look good for their wife, right? It's different motivations. So when you're creating content, you, you'll be speaking on completely different things based on if they're single or if they're married. Right? So get super clear. Is your ideal client single or are they married? Number six. I love this one. I love number six. Where does your ideal client hang out offline, meaning off of social media, and where do they hang out online? Taking my business as an example again, helping real estate professionals, primarily male between the ages of 30 to 50, they're not really on Instagram. They're not really on Instagram, they're primarily on Facebook. So when I first started my business, I thought, oh, I gotta be on Instagram, because that's where everybody is. Didn't really get much business. Made the switch to Facebook, game changer. 100% of our business now comes from either email marketing or Facebook. Facebook ads, Facebook organic, and like I said, email marketing. Why? Because that's where our ideal client hangs out. Right? So look at all of the things that we just went over, right? Are they male or are they female? Are they, what's their age range? What's their occupation or hobby? What's their income range? Are they single and are they married? And then ask yourself, what social media platforms does that individual hang out on, right? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Snapchat? Are they on email marketing? Are they on Facebook? Are they on a bunch of different platforms? That's where you need to be. That's where you need to be hanging out online is where your ideal client is. Jordan, what's up, bro? Then, once you identify where they are online, you also have to identify where you are offline. There should be an offline side to your business. Let me tell you a story. So, you guys already know, I follow Grant Cardone a lot, and every year he hosts a what's called a 10X event. The event that I attended most recently had 35,000 people in it, right? 35,000 people and all of them were business owners. And if they weren't business owners, they were real estate professionals. So I said, I need to buy myself a ticket. I need to go to that event because that's where my ideal client was. I got seven clients from attending that event. Seven clients from attending that event, right? Why? Because that's where my ideal client hangs out offline, right? Yes, primarily all of your prospecting, a lot of your prospecting should be done online. Where is your ideal client online? But you should not be afraid of the offline. And from my experience, what I've learned is offline builds trust way faster, way faster. There's always gonna be skepticism when you're prospecting online, so that's why it's important to identify where does my ideal client hang out offline, right? Do they hang out in airports? Do they hang out in coffee lounges? Do they hang out in bars? Do they hang out at sports games? Do they go to networking events, right? Get super, super clear on where they are so you could put yourself in a position to have a conversation with that individual. And I'm, I'm even gonna take this a step further. How do you convert people offline to online? Literally create a conversation. Don't even talk about your business. Don't even talk about your program. Just ask them questions. Hey, what do you do? Oh, how long have you been doing that for? Wow, what inspired you to do that, right? Have a conversation, and then when you're exiting that conversation, say, hey, we should get linked up on Facebook. Hey, we should get linked up on Instagram. Have them friend you, and then the next, the next day, just take them through the messenger process and book them for a call. It's super easy. It's super, super easy. But anyways, guys, that's how you identify your ideal client. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, I'm gonna do a five-day growth series on this, so there's gonna be five different segments. And what this is, like what the whole like landscape of the five-day growth series is, is how to get your first client, right? The first part of getting your first client is identifying 
who do I even want my client to be? Now, like I said, on July 6th, the Next Level Coaching Academy officially launches. If you guys have any questions for me or my business partner, Dela, if you guys don't already know, her Instagram is Dela Loves Dumbbells. Feel free to reach out. My DMs are open. Dela's DMs are open. We would love to answer your questions, have you in the program, and also get on a call with you. So, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your night, and I'll talk, be talking to you guys tomorrow. Peace out.